So, if you're a real gearhead, like a real gearhead, you can't have a car that's just like everyone else's because that base model just won't do it. You gotta throw in a turbo or two, get a sweet new paint job, but be careful, and you've been warned by me, because there's a lot of ways that you can completely ruin your car by modding it the wrong way. Luckily, we here at Ideal are gonna help you avoid all these common mistakes. And there's a couple on this list that I bet you're not even thinking of. So, if you're new here, my my name's Brad Danger, this is Ideal. Please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Buckle up, and let's go. Of course, we all want more power, but if you aren't careful, you might end up giving your car more horsepower than it can even handle. Absolutely, more power. See, once you get hit with the mod bug, things can go downhill very quickly. Let's say that you add more horsepower. Well, you have to expect that other things like your transmission is gonna struggle a little bit more. And so you're gonna have to think about upgrading that. And then because you have more power going down to the ground, you're gonna get more wheel spin. So you're gonna have to upgrade your tires. But when you do put all that power down to the ground, well, chances are you're still running factory brakes and they aren't gonna get the job done anymore. And so you're gonna be looking at BBKs all day, baby. So just remember when you start adding one modification, especially when you're looking at power mods, other modifications are gonna be necessary. And realistically, if you're gonna spend that much dough to boost the power of your whip, well, don't buy a bunch of cheap parts to compensate for that. because that's not gonna work either. And I will be the first to admit, not all cheap parts are crap, but you usually get what you pay for. And those eBay specials probably weren't put through the same testing that certified manufacturers require. And that's probably why putting an eBay turbocharger on your car makes for such good YouTube content. And that's because as you can imagine, they tend to break a way easier. So pay for quality when you can and don't cheap out. And one of the things that you should be thinking about before you do your first modification on a car is have a rough idea of what your ultimate end goal is. You see, modifying a car without a plan can be a total financial nightmare. So, no plans? And I get it, you're just gonna put on an intake and an exhaust. But once the honeymoon period's done with those, well, let's just say you take your stock car and modify it. Looks good, right? Well, yes and no, because if you haven't planned out your build, then things can get out of hand very quickly. And uh, don't be that guy. So make a list, check it twice, and just don't overdo it. Because I've seen people time and time again get in over their heads with their build, and they have so much money tied up into it that they would have been just way better off starting with a better platform to begin with. And plus, you wanna pay attention to the order that you wanna do those mods in. Yeah, I know, it seems pretty straightforward, but trust me, I've seen this mistake all too often. But if you wanna put in some new badass racing seats, well, take out the damn carpet first. Why? Because guess what? If you wanna remove the carpet later, those seats are gonna to have to come right back out. And again, now you're doing twice the amount of work. So save yourself the headache and do the seats and the carpet at the same time. But also remember, if you do plan on taking out those factory seats, you may be sacrificing some safety. And the same thing goes for your steering wheel because almost all cars come with built-in safety features. Unless, of course, you drive a Ford Fiesta. Just kidding, even that death trap still has airbags and seatbelts. And all airbags and seatbelts are built to fit the seats and steering wheels from the factory. So if you go and switch out the seats, the seatbelts aren't gonna work as well as they were designed to. And it gets even worse if you change out the steering wheel. You see, the stock one is designed with an airbag in the middle to help protect in a crash. But if you change it out with an aftermarket quick release, one, well, you definitely lose a bunch of protection in a crash. So yes, I agree, it does look super stylish, but it's definitely not as safe. And while we're on the topic of steering, well, anytime that you do modifications to the suspension or the wheels, just go and get an alignment. And guys, I've taken my car to an alignment shop before, after putting on new wheels and tires, and they threw it up on the rack and they said they didn't have to tweak anything and they didn't charge me. So it doesn't hurt because even an alignment with stock wheels and tires can be extremely helpful because this is how your car tracks down the road. And so anytime that you mess with your wheels, tires, suspension, you'll wanna book an appointment for an alignment and make sure that those tires are perfectly set up for the road. And not only will this help your car drive better, but it will actually save you money. Because if your vehicle is out of alignment, well then your tires are gonna wear out prematurely and tires are not cheap. And let me know down in the comments, when was the last time that you got your car, truck, or SUV aligned? Because I bet for a lot of you, it was a lot longer than 
six months ago. And seriously, it's one of the best modifications that you can do because it'll make your vehicle drive so much better. And plus, it's gonna stop all the wear and tear on your suspension, wheels, tires. And while we're on the topic of tires, don't cheap out on tires or get the wrong tires in the first place. They are the first thing that meets the road and hopefully the only thing that meets the road. And so buying the wrong tires can lead to some pretty devastating results. Tires are pretty much the most important modification to any vehicle. And the way I like to find out what are the best tires for my vehicle is just go on the Facebook groups or forums and ask, hey, what tires are you guys running and which ones would you recommend? Because you really wanna put ones with the right width, sidewall, height, and wheel diameter on your vehicle. And of course, they have to fit your wheels and fenders as well. But if you wanna take it up to expert level, also look at the load rating. Essentially, it's a number ranging from zero to 279. And the higher the number, the more weight the tire can handle. So you don't wanna put Miata tires on your Ford Mustang GT because, well, chances are they won't be able to hold the weight on the Mustang. And then you're probably looking at a blowout for sure and it's not gonna end pretty. Also, another super thing to key in on is speed rating. See, your mom's Camry has a different speed rating than let's say your AMG. And so you're gonna wanna decide how fast you want your tires to be able to go and then buy the ones that are rated a little bit higher than that. And also, once your tires are mounted, be very careful with your tire's max air pressure. And if you key in on all these different things, well then you're gonna have a ton of smiles per gallon. And guys, I think one thing that we can all agree on is that modifications are, well, they're expensive. And so modify for yourself. Don't just try to do it to keep up with the trends because if you spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on modifications and only in a couple of years, they're completely out of style, that's a double whammy because it didn't just hit your bank account, but it also, hit your ego. Case in point, what about chrome spinners? Yeah, just a few years ago, these things were all the rage, and now you wouldn't be caught dead driving a car with spinners. Or how about Lambo doors? Yeah, let's leave those for the Italian supercars. Yeah, I think you get the idea. And you know just as well as I do that there was a time when all of these were considered cool. That's cool. <laughs> And yes, it was a dark time, but it was a time nonetheless. So if you decide to follow the trends and modify your car in a trendy way, well, just know it's gonna go out of fashion just as quick as it came in. And the opposite of following trends and adding modifications is gutting your car. Yes, and I know, gutting your car sheds a ton of weight and not to mention that your car will handle better and break better too. So what's the downside of gutting your car? Well, you're pretty much throwing all practicality into the trash and in a track car, Okay, it makes sense, but in your daily driver, trust me, you'll prefer that you didn't. Imagine taking out the back seats, the carpet, the door panels, the headliner, and what you pretty much get is a tin can with wheels and you hear every rock and stone hitting the car. Although the one nice thing about having a gutted car is that even a car thief probably won't break in because they'll think that another car thief already broke in and took everything. But that's really the only positive of a gutted car on the street. And as the saying goes, for every hour it takes to take something apart, it takes at least double if not triple that to put it back in. And a lot of times, especially on higher end cars, that door panel is never gonna fit the same way as it did from the factory. So you've been warned. And on that note, remember, we're not professionals and well, there's some mods that should be left to the professionals. And we all wanna think that we're above par garage mechanics until you totally botch a modification. And that's when you have to hang your head while a real mechanic cleans up your mess that you made. And so one way to actually save money is just swallow your pride and take it to the mechanics in the first place. And I'm not saying you shouldn't go change your own oil or even your own brakes, but if your engine throws a rod and you've never rebuilt a motor before, well, I suggest you don't pull apart your motor and try to replace whatever went wrong because while yes, there is YouTube University to help you out, there are some things that should be left to the pros. And heck, I'm the first to admit, I changed the clutch on my 911, and thankfully Trav is a professional mechanic, and so he was able to help out, but man, I would have gotten that transmission out, maybe, and it would probably still be out of the car, and it's like a couple years later. And that's how some projects just sit for a long time, and now you don't get to enjoy them. So some stuff, do yourself, other stuff, have professionals do it, and if you find a good balance, well then, you're gonna have a fruitful ownership experience. And so, I'm curious, have you ever had a modification go wrong? Let us know down in the comments. We'll be hanging out there for the first couple hours after this video is uploaded and be responding to all you guys. Also, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps us out. And if you're new here, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. I'm Brad Danger, signing off and keep living the ideal lifestyle.